what is going on youtube it's your boy spanko and today i'm excited because we're on day three of shark week and we're still going to be focused on sharks however we're going to be building a completely different version of the deck now what i mean by that is we're playing something known as kragen control number four stealth kragen is such an insane card and one of the best decks to abuse this card is sharks and in today's video we're going to be showing you guys that deck profile but if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one again the last couple videos have been shark deck profiles and combos in tomorrow's video i'm going to be showing you guys how to play this deck and how to combo with this deck and this entire week is going to be shark week but if you guys just enjoy the videos in general we do the combo videos deck profiles product openings all that good stuff vlogs as well so you guys make sure you guys subscribe for all of that so i hope you guys enjoy today's video and with that let's get right into the deck profile all right so tell me if you guys are enjoying shark week so far we're on day three today and we're obviously showing off more sharks but in today's video we're going to be focusing on kragen control and Stealth Kragen is a very powerful card in combination with some of the cards that you guys are going to see in today's deck profile. So I think this deck is a really cool way to play the deck, a more controlled version of playing Sharks. That's not to say this deck can't combo though. We're going to get into it. You guys will see the combos tomorrow, but when you guys see this deck profile, I think you guys are going to think it's really legit because truthfully, this is a really cool way to play Sharks in today's format. So let's get started here. We are playing three Buzzsaw Shark, of course. This is your best normal summon of the deck. I do want to say that another card that's basically Buzzsaw Shark is your Beautiful Princess. We'll get to it when we get to it but you really want to get to this card because once you get to buzzsaw shark you're going to be in such a good spot it's your one card rank four this card makes a lot of things happen for you which is really really nice then we're playing three lantern shark this card is not a bad normal summon for you however it's actually just better to be special summoned in a lot of ways but again it does help you get into your rank fours which is the most important part of this deck then we're playing three ixies remora this card is just so insane in this deck man there's so many ways that this card just makes this deck absolutely broken and so you have to play the three ixies remora it helps you get into your stealth crack and helps you get into your dweller into your second bahamut shark so you can make double toad it's just so so powerful so that's why you got to play three ixies remora then we're playing two of the silent sea nettle over here now sea nettle is a very important card because it does two things for you one it's an extender it gets a special summon itself but it does lock you into water monsters so keep that in mind the thing is though with this deck is you're not really worried about that most of the cards you're playing are water monsters so it's not a big issue but the second effect is really relevant as well where you can banish this card from your graveyard you can target three water monsters in your graveyard and shuffle them back into your deck this includes extra deck monsters which is really nice because it can shuffle back your toads shuffle back your bahamut sharks and give you really good plays on your turns three turns four turns five because all your extra deck monsters are going to be back into your extra deck but again it does lock you into water monsters so you guys are going to notice that we're not playing the bestial monsters it is because a few cards in here are going to lock you out of pretty much using your bestials so that's why i'm not playing the bestials but silence in is a very important card in this deck then we're playing three tenny spirit shatana shatana is just a level four extender for you special summon it to start your turn it's very very powerful we're playing three silent angler this is another one of those cards that's a free special summon it's an extender for you but again it does it conflict with the bestial cards a lot because once you special summon this card you can't summon cards from your hand for the rest of the turn so let's say you have a bestial in hand and you have a silent angler let's say at this point in the combo your opponent doesn't have anything for you to bestial and they are not playing any of their tournaments cards they don't have anything going for them you summon your silent angler and then they go hovenous effect or they go and you know any kind of effect that's going to let them mill and then now you can't actually use your bestial monsters because you've used your silent angler so that's why we're not playing the bestials just thought i would explain that as well but silent angler of course is a really powerful extender for this deck and so you have to be playing three then we're playing beautiful princess i think i mentioned this a little bit earlier but you have to be playing three of this because this is essentially your other form of buzzsaw shark if you don't open buzzsaw shark you can open your beautiful princess you normal summon this you banish it it summons your buzzsaw shark from your deck and you're pretty much good to go this entire deck is just your normal summons and then as well as your extenders right and that's really important speaking of extenders we're playing the one instant fusion as well as the two ready fusion if you guys watch the other deck profile for sharks it's a very similar build we're also playing the two white mirror these are all just extenders for you all of these cards over here are pretty standard i would say just because of the core of the deck i think is very consistent in the sense of these are the best cards to play for the core so there's no reason to switch it up it's everything surrounding the core that changes up what the deck wants to do white mirror which is an extender but it's also a really good follow-up for you because if you white mirror and summon back something like a buzzsaw shark you can now search another buzzsaw shark from your deck and that helps you have a follow-up for your next turn which is really really powerful right so that's why we like the two white mirror and the really nice thing is that once you do have all these extenders and you do create your full combo what's stopping you from drawing into your traps or drawing into your hand traps nothing so for that reason we are playing the two potted desires because let's say you open buzzsaw shark plus an extender and then you can do your full combo once you do your full combo you can activate your desires try to draw into your dd crows which i'm going to talk about in a second
second try to draw into your imperm your judgment your goals and match so that's why i think pot of desires is really really powerful and again you're playing three ofs of all the most important cards in your deck so you're never really worried about banishing all your important cards right now speaking of hand traps you're going to want to be playing the three dd crow as well as the three imperm imperm is of course really good into a lot of different decks it's really good into the tier limit matchup the floundries matchup the sprite matchup etc it's just so so powerful and dd crow is really nice as well because you can't play the bestials in this deck so because you can't play the bestials i still think it makes a lot of sense to be playing some kind of graveyard hate and dd crow is really good into that now keep in mind dd crow is also good into the sprite matchup because if your opponent does activate elf to summon something back you can always dd crow the elf target there's so many different ways where dd crow is really good it's obviously not great into the floundries matchup but again neither were the bestials anyway right so i think dd crow is really powerful in this deck and i think you want to be playing three imperm is the same thing especially because you want to go first with this deck and it is more of a control deck setting the imperm can be really nice with your full combo right so imperm of course is a three of then to protect your board you really want to play three solemn judgment you don't want to lose to evenly match you don't want to lose to cards like dark ruler no more and solemn judgment just helps you in that sense you also don't want to lose to cards like lightning storm or regeki that is really popular right now or just board breakers in general and if your opponent doesn't have those board breakers then solemn judgment is just going to be another form of disruption so it has dual purpose which is really really powerful you want to be playing three of course then we're playing three goes in match and this card you have to be playing three of in this deck because stealth kragen and goes in match is pretty much ftk against so many different decks and the reason for that is because all your opponent's monsters with stealth kragen are going to become water so as soon as they commit to one monster on the board then they're pretty much stuck to water monsters and that's insane so most decks are not going to be playing water monsters and so you're pretty much going to be locking them out of all using everything else in their hand in their deck in their extra deck etc etc so goes in match is really powerful and then for the last card we are playing the one called by the grave now you guys can play any card here as your last card this was just the 40th card it could be harpy's feather duster it could even be upstart goblin if you want to be more consistent it could be upstart goblin so for that reason i just i'm gonna play call by the grave because you don't want to lose to an ash or a veiler to your buzzsaw shark you don't want to lose to those kind of cards so for that reason i do like playing the one called by it's just another form of protection for you right so that's why we're playing it here but again this could be a harpy could be an upstart could be any other card really but i, I really think the one called by the grave is really powerful so that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck very very consistent moving on to the extra deck here it is pretty standard rank four fish stuff you're playing the rare fish of course this is your instant fusion as well as your ready fusion targets you're playing two bahamut shark as well as two totally awesome really easy to make two toads in this deck so you want to be playing two we're playing the one abyss dweller dual purpose again it's really good into the tier limit matchup but also because you're using it with the water monsters all of your water monsters are going to gain 500 attack and that becomes really prevalent especially when you're trying to go for game that's why i like playing the dweller the one baguska of course is very powerful we're playing two stealth kragen as well as the two kragen spawn now these are going to explain a little bit more in detail but let me just finish the extra deck out and then we'll go into these a little bit more detail we're playing the one vespin auto of course this helps you with your combo we're playing the one zeus of course because you're playing all ixies monsters and the one airy the water charmer which is really relevant in today's format you can steal a rule colors from your opponent's graveyard you can steal a rhino heart you can steal a mud dragon depending on how they summon it so this card is very very powerful in that sense now let's get back into the kragen spawn and the stealth kragen because if anyone hasn't played this deck before this is essentially the heart and soul of the deck and it's the reason why this deck is called kragen control i'm going to read out the effects to you guys i'm going to explain the synergy with these effects so first things first is all face up monsters on the field become water and again like i said with that goes in match if you set this up plus a goes in match as soon as your opponent commits any monster to their side of the field they're locked into water monsters and that's insanely powerful right now the other thing is with this card is it's really good because once per turn during the main phase quick effect you can destroy one water monster your opponent controls so it's just a quick effect pop which is really nice you don't even have to detach to do that and then you can also inflict damage equal to half the attack of the monster you destroyed and that could be really powerful as well because as soon as you destroy a monster your opponent controls you put them down life points especially because a lot of your monsters are not really big on attack points it helps you just push for game a lot easier when you do some burn damage here and there every single turn right so that's why the stealth kragen is also really good in that sense and then it has more effects if that wasn't enough it floats it does not just get destroyed and do nothing else if this card is destroyed you can summon stealth kragen spawns from your extra deck up to the number of materials this card had when it was destroyed so why is that really good you don't need to detach to destroy cards your opponent controls so you're most of the time gonna have two materials under this which means you're gonna get to summon two kragen spawns now why that's really good is because kragen spawns have some really cool effects that we'll talk about in a second but on top of that you get to attach a material to each of the kragen spawns when you this card is destroyed all right so this card gets destroyed and you're gonna get to summon your kragen spawns and you're gonna get to attach a material to them and why is this really good kragen spawn has a very similar effect to stealth 
Kraken, where once per turn during the main phase, you can destroy a water monster your opponent controls. Now, because Stealth Kraken is not on the board a lot of the time with this, you won't be able to get that effect off unless you summon the second one, which is honestly not that hard in this deck. But the really cool thing about this card is if this card is destroyed, you can target a Stealth Kraken monster in your graveyard and summon it back to your side of the field and then attach a water monster from your graveyard back into the Stealth Kraken. So why that's really good is because Stealth Kraken will float into this Kraken spawn and then Kraken spawn will float back into the Stealth Kraken, which is really, really powerful. And now once you float your back into your Stealth Kraken, keep in mind you're going to be summoning two spawns most of the time. So if one of them gets destroyed, you summon your Stealth Kraken back, all your opponent's monsters become water again, and now you have the Stealth Kraken pop as well as the second Kraken spawn pop, which is really, really powerful. So I know that was a lot to explain, but I hope you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from, where it's kind of like this is going to float into this, this is going to float back into this, then you're going to get multiple pops. If you have something like a Gozen match, then your opponent can't really summon monsters. That's why this is really called Kraken Control. You're playing at a controlled pace, a slower pace, and you're making sure your opponent is playing at your pace because you don't want to play a super fast game. You want to play it slow. You want to be able to destroy your opponent's monsters. And then each single turn, if you have Buzzsaw Sharks, if you have other cards in your hand, you're just going to be putting up a lot of damage on board. So I think this deck is a really cool way to play Sharks in today's format. Again, you're playing cards like Judgment to not lose to Evenly, to not lose to Lightning Storm. So when you're setting up this kind of board with Gozen Mash as well as Stealth Kraken, it can be very, very powerful in today's format. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my take on Kraken Control for the January 2023 format. Keep in mind that when the formats change, you guys can change up certain hand traps to fit the current format that you're in. But the really nice thing about this deck is with Gozen Match and the Shark Core, that's not really going to change. That's all going to be based around the Kraken Control aspect. Now, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. Guys, this entire week is going to be Shark Week. But in general, if you guys enjoy these videos, we do combo videos, dual videos, deck profiles, product openings, vlogs, all that good stuff. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. Thank you guys all for watching. And again, if you guys want to see tomorrow's combo video, you guys need to be subscribed so you guys can see that. All right. Thank you guys. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.